happening? It's me, Sonny Ono. You know, the guy who was doing a selfie on national television at World Championship Wrestling before everybody else was on national television. And I am here to tell you this evening about the legend of underground, a new show produced by Hidden Gym Production. Darby Allen, one of his first match before he was an AEW star. Asuka, yeah, that Asuka from WWE. This is the stuff that hasn't been seen. Certainly not in this genre in the United States. So if you really want to know where the, all the wrestlers came before they were big stars, this is the place to be tuning in. Legend of Underground by Hidden Gym Production. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome for tuning in today. This is your co-host, Ron Von Hess, with my serious host, UFC legend, former NWA world champion, Dan the Beast Severin. Hey, Ron, it's a great to be here to watch another episode of Legends of the Underground. That's right. Right from the middle of inner Tokyo, we carry the best in strong style action and what is called inner core. Intercore. Yes, okay. Intercore is a style of fighting that mixes mixed martial arts, strong style, pro wrestling. Pretty much, if you can swing a punch or throw a kick, Intercore is for you if you're tough enough. It's your inner core of your body. You're either in or you're out, and we're in Intercore. That's right. And Master Fugo, master of Intercore and creator of Intercore, very tough standards, as you'll see by these two fighters. The man in the Greco-Roman outfit, Mr. Takashima, fighting the martial arts master, Osagawa. Looking forward to getting this action underway. Yeah, this should be one of the top matches tonight in mixed martial arts versus Greco-Roman submission action. These guys very both talented and tough. And this is at the 10-year anniversary about 20 years ago in Tokyo, one of the gems that has been dug up by this company that would have never seen the light of day. Wow. History. Absolutely. And the underground still going to this day, fights about every other weekend. And... People pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars to sit ringside, and the Japanese people just love Intercore. That's one thing I've always known about the, the Japanese uh, people. It, it, sometimes you, they see it's actually a rather quiet match, but they're very studious, and they get most of the reactions when a match is uh, done. Looks like they're about to make our introductions. Ref says, fight! Oh, right away, going for leg kick kicks it from Ogasawara. Hey, man, in trouble early. Then look at that. Look at Ogatawar as he poses to the crowd right there. He's, I guess he can't take a little bit of the pro wrestler out of the martial artist. <laughs> He's got his victim down. Yeah, that was a great, great pose. I'm sure the Japanese photographer's well, ringside got some great picks. Okay, right back. Uh, Ogasawara was going right, right for some more leg kicks, but then uh, Takashima came in with that uh, double leg takedown, and now he's got basically what's known as a half mount position. Transition to a cross body position. And he threw some bitch slap in there just for insult to injury. <laughs> That's look, you know, it's, it's sort of distracts your opponent there from what you're really looking for. He's into an arm, arm lock type position. Isley had his arm bent and then used strikes to get loose. Osagawa trying to get to his feet. Takashima rolls to the corner. Both men, oh, Osagawa rubbing his eyes. I think Takashima might have slipped a dirty one in there when they were in the exchange there. Takashima known for being kind of a dirty fighter. Here we go. Let's see who's going to land first. The, the striker. Oh, we got the, the grab book showing up. A couple of nice little forearm shivers. Farmer's carry. Very nice. Was, was, the way he had that leg lock, I thought he was going to go right into a, a leg type submission, but nope, he's going to stay in that little half mount position. Ooh. And now deliver some forearms, but now. Uh, no. oh, uh, Osagawa, he, he has just killed him. Osagawa wasn't going to sit there to take, take any of that. He was just going to throw his own forearms right back. Shots to the face by Osagawa on Takashima while he was trying to pick him up. It was like, whoa. Talk, uh, Osagawa, known for his strikes and his kicks. And look at that, like right to the kidneys right there. He's right on top. Camera angle a little, a little off, but you could see he was striking him right to his kidneys. And there goes Takashima right back to that arm. Bargain. Once again, 
Osagawa wisely keeping that arm bent to not get that stre arm stretched out because once he does, he knows he will tap. Yeah, Takashima has been get, get, get kicked with that one leg that he brought actually in, in the, almost like a little cradle type of a position. Ooh, oh, another shot to the kidneys and a karate chop, two or three oh, right to the... Oh, and a double axe handle to his chest and he did not pull it. Takashima pulling the gi up around the head. Why get a little too much hockey here? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, there's as much excitement and as much on the line here as the NHL oh, he's champion. With it. He's got his gi, he's got he's got the wrapped right around. He's got, oh, nice little scarf with, with the ch what uses his own gi against him. And he's got the arm in, he's got the sleeper hold on. And Takajima, really a dirty fighter, like I told you, known for being dirty. Look how he's keeping that arm covered up so the ref can't see. As Osagawa throws a couple of strikes to get loose. Sit down, dude, you're in my way. <laughs> All right, so that's right. On this show, if it, when people, okay, ma'am, I hope you're having a good night. When you see you on this show, we acknowledge you. But look at these guys throwing some, Osagawa throwing some major karate chops and punches on Takashima. Takashima fires back with a big forearm, Dan. Got him down. Okay, yep. Takashima is put the tool. Osagawa. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? If we were excellent at pronouncing these games right out of the shot, I, I don't know if it would just be this show. But that's okay. Osagawa now, once again, he's trying to get that arm, yeah. wisely keeping it bent. Takashima trying to go ahead and pull that arm straight. Look at, I mean, look at the torque he's putting on there. He's got his back. He's using as much torque, and now he's using his feet for torque. He's really trying to straight out his body is what he's trying to do. Just use, use that, that, that whole skeletal system. But if he has to take that left leg up there and just be strike down with a heel hit, oh, he could have really oh. delivered some del devastating strikes. Look at that. Oh. Another forearm. I don't think, oh, I knew Asagawa wasn't going to like that. Hey, the look on his face after that strikes uh, told a million, uh, a million tales as he gets up throwing strikes to Takashima. Oh, and he starts throwing those kicks. I tell you what, as far as, as Osagawa is concerned, He'd be happy to kick Takashima in the head and go home and collect, you know, his pay at the winner's booth. As he throws another kick to Takashima, keeping him down. Takashima in a little bit of trouble. Hopefully he can get up and continue this fight because this has been a damn good fight so far, Dan. Well, no, it has been very much. Well, I'm actually almost surprised that, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure about some of the, the rules here in Japan right now, why Ogasawara would have allowed that much time, and not simply just unless the referee, referee was like, actually giving him the countdown because it's strike, it's a knockout or a submission in this match. But uh, when the guys are close enough to the chains, the ref has the latitude to give them, uh, I believe, three to five seconds of air before they start again. And, and as you see, Takashima getting knocked down again. Yeah, he oh, needs oh, that three to five seconds. Yeah, oh, <laughs> the world definitely is uh, still just delivering devastating kicks and, and forms. And Takashima not to be denied. Look at this. He's struggling his way up the chains, not to be denied. Does not want to get counted out by the ref. The ref asking him if he gives, and he said no. Ref says, okay, he can fight. Um, Asagawa also looking a little worn here now. The more that the match goes on, you know, it takes a toll on both athletes. As we both know, oh, once you get a oh, headlock, once, as once we know, when you get blown up in there, you're blown up. Yeah, cardiovascular or I should say lack of cardiovascular preparation makes cowards of us all. Yes. Takashima definitely has got that headlock. Archie not up with it. Gala got his eyes closed and is sucking wind. Look at him. I mean, he's really sucking wind right now. Come on, Sagawa and the crowd. I think they're just a little stunned by what they're seeing because these guys are really fighting here. They're really putting a good uh, action pace fight here. And these guys are... Both of them, tremendous at what each one does. Um, I don't know who to pick because Takashima, like I said, a super dirty fighter. Osagawa, an incredible fighter and striker. I mean, this is a pick em. Yeah, Takashima just come right back to both, both being on their knees here, but they're still, still throwing they're strikes. They're tired, but they're still just battling it up. And the crowd loving it. They And I guarantee you, a Japanese crowd, you'll know, because if these guys, if they love it, they'll get a standing ovation and claps at the end. Is it? Oh, gosh, oh, oh, it slack kicks him right to the back of the head. Takashima just in so much trouble here. Ogasawara is just, uh, I mean, I love Mr. Ogasawara. I have tons of respect for him, but I cannot say his name five times fast, man. <laughs> you know, I don't think they need oh, to. Oh, a little uh, flip uh, head kick. 
I almost felt like the Karate Kid was there right now. You know what I mean? Like doing the crane, you know? That was incredible. Takashima, I don't think, agrees with us as he's trying to pick his ass up off the mat. And I'm surprised Takashima's right back in there. In the, in the, the heat of the action here, I think he's got actually like a, a leg lock on the... Oh, oh, I'm sorry, and, and you know the what's the far side there that we can't really see all that well. And he's arching up with it, trying to go for almost like a reverse arm bar. Ogasawara in some trouble here. It, it's amazing how this fight just keeps going back and forth, and these guys are being so brutal. Like, it's, it's hard to believe the stamina these guys have. I mean, these guys have been fighting hard now for nine minutes and 40 seconds almost. That is a long fight, as you know being in the octagon. Now, now he's got, is it, uh, great, great. Got it to the chains, he's got to the chains. Look, see, referee using that latitude, and now he's breaking the hole. He's making Takashima. Takashima's refusing to break the hole. Boy, I tell you what, he is one dirty son of a bitch, Dan. At the same token, I can kind of understand where, where uh, Takashima is coming from. I mean, Ogasa War has really been putting out the punches, the kicks, <laughs> especially at that last head kick, spinning back kick. Yeah, he's been fighting on guts alone, but oh, oh, that's the knockout blow right there. I think he was a little pissed off at uh, Takashima Ogasawara knocking him out with a kick to the back of his skull. And as the referees get, yep, referee's going to go ahead and count him out. And our winner, Ogasawara, with a knockout to Takashima. What a what a battle! What a the battle crowd, the crowd of lighting up. And as, if you don't know Japanese crowds, they don't yell and scream a lot during the matches. The fact that they're applauding so hard means that they actually saw something that they really respect. Japanese crowds are notoriously some of the toughest crowds to perform in or fight in, period. As I was over to Japan myself, I kept thinking, boy, I did that. I did that. that not a normal reaction that, that uh, I'd be used to as with a, an American crowd. As the ref raises his arm, your winner, Ogasawara, with a knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back at Legends of the Underground. This is your co-host, Ron Von Hest, with your host with the most, Dan the Beast Severin, the UFC legend and Hall of Famer. Tyra, the exotic panther Rusume, waking her way to the ring for this handicap match as she's looking really good as we're waiting for the entrance of her tag team partner in this handicap match versus Humongous. I'm actually excited to, to hear your announcement here, Ron. <laughs> yeah, she's a very good friend of mine, actually, and she's tried out for NXT and she's uh, tried out for the WWE. And I think she has a big future in the business. She's traveled all over the world. So the Japanese wrestlers, overall, I mean, they got such a good work ethic to them. I mean, they, they don't uh, they don't pause the way that a lot of American uh, wrestlers will. Yeah, Miss Rusume, very well seasoned. She's fought women from all over the world. She's been to Austria as Humongous makes his way to the ring, carrying that is the Nepal Tag Team Championship right there, one half that he held with Martin Payne at the time. As Lord Humongous lets him know he's a champion, he loves to tear into the Japanese crowd. If you're ever backstage when Humongous is out there, he look at oh, he's really giving it to Tyra already. He is a king of intimidation, Dan. Well, I, he's got uh, he's got size alone, and when you look at the, the number of tattoos, you know I don't think that man's got too much uh, skin left that uh, without any ink on it. And this man has a 40-plus year wrestling career, Dan. He has been wrestling and training wrestlers for almost, I believe, 30 to 40 years. As Sexy Storm Ricky Fuji makes his way in the ring. A lot of people don't know, but the Shawn Michaels gimmick, the Sexy Boy gimmick, was actually taken from Ricky Fuji. Really? That's right. And he still comes out to the music. It's a similar version, but in Japanese, of the Sexy Boy song. His band always plays it. And Ricky... Though, although he's imitated, never duplicated. Ah. Yeah, Ricky Fuji has been a legend in Japan, still fighting. He was an IWGP, I believe, uh, junior heavyweight champion. He was in the AWA, I believe he was AWA junior heavyweight champion. He has competed all over the world. He was in uh, 
the, one of the big tournaments for the junior heavyweights in IWGP back in the day. Uh, Extructor at Taka Michinoku's Dojo, you name it, Ricky Fuji has done it. I'm just curious to see how this match is going to start. And as I, I kind of thought, it, would, it was going to be in the uh, Ricky and uh, Humongous. Humongous just on. showing his ass to, to Ricky, showing him no respect to start. Humongous, an intimidator, even with a legend like Ricky, showing him no quarter. As Ricky slams the headlock onto Humongous, Ricky's not really impressed with the bluster of Humongous as Ricky's been in FMW and winning and all over. Ricky knows what he's doing. Very well seasoned. Well, as they say, as long as you control the head, the body follows. So he's, he's got he's controlling Humongous' head. Oops. Just Humongous, Lord Humongous just got out of that one. Oh. Okay, there she goes right back to the arm ringer. But there he goes. Humongous reverses it and goes into a headlock. Very good scientific technique there on Humongous. Might have been just a little coy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. He just, he was like playing with her like a, like a, I hate to say it, like an exotic cat, you know? <laughs> As he, oh, look at that. Did you see the look on Tyra's face when he when he clamped on that headlock right there? Oh! Too happy about that. Point no, no, no. of the elbow to the back of the neck. Dan, I think that Tyra is right now, she's going, oh, but look, see, this is why I love Tyra. Look at her. No, she, she's a little fired up, though. <laughs> yeah, she's no punk. That's for sure. Tyra's no punk. Oh! And that is a sizable ass right there, taken to the face. Um, I think even Rikishi would say, damn, that's a sizable ass. <laughs> As Tyra gets loose there, Tyra, Tyra is just one tough girl. Look at those. Ooh, nice kick from Tyra as another one said, look, he just shrugged it off and just <laughs> and just opened up some whoop ass on her right there. I mean, you got to admit. Humongous, just a big, intimidating man as he body slams Tyra to the canvas. Go for the pinfall here. Just basically just, just trying to punish just punish her. Yeah, there won't be a pinfall in this match. It's going to be a submission or a knockout. Okay. That's kind of going to be the theme of the evening as most of these fights are to knock out as he's trying to break Tyra's neck, it looks like, right there. Made up on that. He did not get... Oh, she just wisely tags out to Ricky. Ricky said, I don't think he believes that that's very chivalrous of, you know, Mr. Humongous there. Yes, well. Out, nice, oh, shoulder tackles. Like, I don't think that's going to cut it, Ricky. Another shoulder tackle. Humongous, I think it's just, it's just, it's just fired him up. Just playing with him, but look at that. Oh, he actually made a move a little bit, but oh, there he goes. Yeah, Ricky, I don't think that's going to work. You're going to have to try something else. As Humongous slams him on the back a couple times, Ricky fire him back up. Gives him a shot to the head. Got to remember, Ricky Fuji, tough veteran, though. FMW, been in some of the bloodiest, hottest feuds, you know, in the world. And a Japanese, you know, bona fide legend. As he gives a couple shots to the head of Humongous, and Humongous staggers back to the corner, and Tyra's going to come in and get some payback now. Oh! Slot to the jaws. He shakes his jaws. She got him right there. Another big knee. Look at that. Oh, is she going to snapmare him forward? What's she going to do from the snapmare? Oh! Deliver the goods. Deliver the goods. Boom! Right to the back. Another, another one. Nice, devastating shot. It's called Tyler. an insiguri, isn't it? Isn't that called an insiguri kick? I'll, I'll just, you can call it whatever you want. I'll just simply say that. Or <laughs> shit like that to the back. I don't think he enjoyed that because he looked pretty pissed off getting up as, yep, oh, he goes right back to that arm ringer and, oh! Oh, oh fine. Oh, no. Nicely done by Humongous. You saw, you saw that look on his face while he was determined to deliver the goods. She is not happy. Right now, she doesn't know where she is. She thinks she's in Austria wrestling for the Women's Championship right now. Definitely doesn't know she's in Tokyo. As Humongous picks her up and snapmares her again, what's he got in mind here? It looks like, I bet, oh, oh, it's, oh yeah, he's going to keep working that, that neck. Chin. He's got that chin. Remember when he stepped on her neck? Now, her neck's already sore from being stepped on. And look as he keeps one hand on her head and the other one on the back of her neck, wrenching at a double karate chop right to her neck. I honestly think that if he breaks her neck in this ring, he could care less. Humongous, a, dirt, a dastardly villain, never has wanted the cheers of the fans, never wants the respect of the fans. All he wants to do is hurt people and win championships. And, hey, and you can't really fault the guy. I mean, this is pro wrestling. Survival of the fittest. 
And as far as Intercore goes, Intercore tries to always take it up a level. As you see, look at this as he goes right. Oh my God! Oh, oh shivers! Right to the neck. We jumped up and down. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, Tyler needs to get get uh, something. Water, gate, water, Gatorade, air. To take over. Let let the. Uh, let uh, Ricky step in and uh, take that action here once again. Ricky coming in as a house of fire, though. Fires him up as he actually gives Humongous a snapmare. What's he got here? He's moving the leg over. Ricky has some kind of intention here because he's a great counter wrestler. Oh, yeah, he's going to tie that leg up. Smart. Very smart. If he's not on his feet, he can't be kicking you in the back of the head and hurting you. <laughs> look at this. Look at, oh, look at Ricky. Look at him. Got that big ham hock of him locked up as he's punching him in the kneecap. He's right there, way, way he keeps reefing up on that toe itself. Oh, I, I right there. <laughs> Look at this, Humongous in the mouth and the eyes now as, he, as Humongous showing why he is one of the dirtiest players. <laughs> Not to coin Ric Flair, but one of the dirtiest players in the Austrian game. These are some of the best. Ooh, kick to the face. This is some of the best talent at World Underground Wrestling. This is from the 25th anniversary show, Dan. And uh, we just did a match before this from the 10th anniversary. 25th anniversary. Highlighted match. Tyra, former world, the actual first world women's champion of World Underground. As, oh, look at that. Got her legs locked up in a, in a kind of a surfboard maneuver as he's got her arm reached back and he wrenches back on her throat. And look at that. He's... It was like a, a unique modified camel clutch type of a movement here. And look, and he's right in the hard cam too. Great shot by the cameraman there of him wrenching her neck. Look at this, the cameraman right there. Oh, oh. The forehead. And the nose. Look as he's like ripping at her nose. Ty oh, and that's it. The refs called it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Legends of the Underground. I'm your co-host, Ron Von Hess, with UFC Hall of Famer, Dan the Beast Severin. This is part of our double main event, Master Fugo and Jaguar Rogowski taking on FMW competitor Onrio 
and Fugo's rival, Umazawa, as Fugo, Fugo Fujibe comes in and shows off the scroll. These scrolls custom made by Fugo. I couldn't tell you what it says, but I guarantee you it's talking smack, Dan. I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Fugo likes us. He's going to come in and do his ceremonial dance. He does this every show, and as part of his presentation, he always brings in someone from the crowd. Funny thing about this at the 10-year anniversary show is he's coaxing the photographer into the ring, which has never been done out of the sold-out crowd. He picks the photographer, and the photographer's like, no, I got a camera. He's like, no, he's dance shooting, with me. He's shooting, he's shooting the shots, and we're going to be doing it right now, but no. <laughs> Excellent job of dancing with that camera in his hand, though. Look at that. He's got that Nikon in his hand, and he's really got the dance down. And it's funny that we have this And it's funny we have this frivolity here, because if you know what you're going to see after this, you're like, this is almost like, un, un, to someone that knows, unnerving because we know what we're going to see now because this is going to be a battle of two teams that hate each other. It's going to be submission or knockout. That's it. That's the only way you can win. And I guarantee you two things, hot action and somebody's going to bleed, Dan. Well, I'd say that we're just going to bleed right now, but uh, you know, we, I just know some of the history for, for both these uh, uh, gentlemen background, I use that term quite loosely, uh, that uh, the, a lot of violence, a lot of violence could take place. Oh yeah, Umazawa, Umazawa waiting in the ring right there, staring down Fugo, where these guys have just a hatred for each other, longtime rivals, as they await the arrival of Onrio from FMW and Jaguar Rogowski. I will tell you that this was a rare, at the time of this match, they didn't do a lot of tag team matches, so this was like a superstar, this was kind of like SummerSlam for the legends of the underground, because for the first time they were bringing in a tag team match with four titanic rivals, two tagging up mentor and student with Jaguar and Fugo against FMW's Onrio and Umazawa Fugo's rival. You can't ask for a bigger match, Dan. When you are the founder of a company called Pro Wrestling 666, like Onrio, you know you're a badass. Yeah, not too many people want to take that uh, moniker on. And he is actually known as the Jap as somewhat of a Japanese ghost, as you'll see during the match. Every time they hit him, you'll see his ghostly pallor kind of go up in the air. Onryo, definitely an enigma in this match. As Umazawa stood there, he stretches out. You look, look at Umazawa. Look how intense he is, Dan. I really think he. Is going to be the X factor in this match. He's the biggest man in this match. He's the most powerful man in this match, and his hatred of Master Fugo, the legend, is is unparalleled. I, I think if he could cripple Fugo in this match, I believe he would. I believe that Fugo could cripple him. He would. He will get the upper hand first. Exactly, and who will get the upper hand last? <laughs> we'll put Ron. We'll <laughs> because these guys here, they don't play as Jaguar. Definitely, besides Fugo, the most popular man in the building. He's the man of the people. He is a tough kicker, tough striker. He can submit. He is, I mean, this guy has got a full repertoire. You name it, he can do it. Jaguar, former World Underground World Heavyweight Champion, as well as Fugo being a former World Heavyweight Champion. Both of these men represent what Intercore is all about, Dan. In the gloves here right now, it just shows that he is going to go right to his specialty of striking. Well, if he hits you with that without those gloves on, odds are he'd kill you. So those gloves are for the protection of Onrio and Umzawa so they don't end up in the morgue instead of just the loser's column if that's the way it goes. But I can tell you, if anybody had a chance of winning this match, Umazawa and Onrio have the best chance because Onrio, an FMW superstar, fighting guys like Masato Tanaka, Onita. I mean, this guy is legit. And Umzawa, same thing. Tough bastard, mean bastard, and I'm going to tell you right now, we are going to see some craziness in this match. I don't know if it'll be long, I don't know if it'll be short, but I will tell you one thing, Dan, it will be violent. Yes, action pack of violence. As Fugo just said, there's another scroll, and I guarantee you once again, that scroll, Dan, is also talking shit. <laughs> So and Fugo, we need an interpreter on some of yeah, I know. It's I tell you, when they do the Japanese dub over, they're gonna really make us look bad. <laughs> they got oh, nice athletic back flick by Jaguar. Can you do that, Dad? Uh, no. If I did that, uh, uh, the match would be over. 
I, I, I could do it, but I want a pay raise before I do it. So if you're hearing me, Sonny, I want a pay raise, Mr. Mr. Ono, and then maybe I'll do a backflip on camera. Till then, you're just going to get my voice. All right, referee says fight. Special referee, Usagawa. And hey, I got his name right. So Usagawa here. He won his match earlier with a knockout as a special guest referee. This is kind of like having Muhammad Ali at the first WrestleMania as the ref. That's how big a match is. This is for the league at the time as Bugo has the arm ringer and the headlock takedown. Yeah, he got Umazawa down. They've got a great referee there who's a, you know, a fighter himself, so he understands. I think he's going to give these guys more latitude and let them fight, Dan. He'd rather let the athletes uh, decide amongst themselves as to who's going to be the champion. Well, I don't think a regular ref at this time could have contained this match as Fugo just squeezing the life out of the head. Wants to pop Umazawa's head like a pimple yeah. there. Yeah, he didn't quite get the uh, the angle there for what he was looking for, for an actual, like a rear naked choke, but he did have a, a nasty crank. Yeah, and look at that as he still goes back to it, but look at that. Umazawa is just on top of it. Nice reversal into a headlock uh -huh. there. Umzawa, just a dangerous, nasty man, Dan. As Fugo trying to reverse it, trying to get some kind of back suplex, Umzawa wisely backs into the corner where his partner on Unreal gives a blind tag to the back. Fugo turns around very luckily. And see, but see, Unreal just stalking Fugo. I mean, look at that, Dan. He's just stalking him. He's not, it's like he's not even afraid of Master Fugo at all. And Fugo's a legend. Now, of course, Unreal a legend as well. But, look, I mean, you can just feel the excitement in the air as these two look at it. As they lock up, as these two definite monsters in the ring lock up, Fugo, just such a brutal competitor. And like I said, Onreal, just downright satanic. These guys are going to bring us the action as Fugo backs him in. Surprise. An actual <laughs> clean break? Well, it's kind of clean. Did you see what flew out of Onreal's hair there? Well, Somewhat clean. Right, huh? <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what, what that flew out of his hair, but... Uh... I believe he could, it's a good thing uh, for him because imagine getting that in your eyes, you know, like mm. as he's shaking his head, it's almost like you got to deal with the toxic stuff he's spitting out of his hair and his wrestling. So these guys are feeling each other out, him and Jaguar. Jaguar, a knock. Oh, look at that. See, look at that. That mist just flying up in the air. Oh, now, look at that. Jaguar was rubbing it out of his eyes there. See, that's what I was talking about. That stuff is definitely, if I was fighting him, I'd be telling the referee, dump a bucket of water on his head. Because that stuff definitely looks like it would irritate the eyes. Jaguar pissed off now. He's just stalking him. Saying, look, you got that shit in my eyes. I did not appreciate that. And look at him. So, oh! Nice kick. nice kick there for Jaguar. Oh, look at those hands combination. Nice kick. Jaguar just measuring him up. On road, but he's showing him no respect. Look at that. Ooh, drop kick missed. And right there goes Onrio shooting on the leg there. He's got kind of a cra half crab. And then to a sl he's slamming him on down by his neck. Never seen that before, but Jaguar quick on his feet. Did you see that reversal and that shot to get back? And that kick. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Was that a spinning back kick? Looked incredible as Onrio... Is staying on top of the leg of Jaguar, which is very smart because if he can eliminate his leg, Dan, that's where a lot of his power comes in for his punches yeah, and his strikes, kicks. strikes and kicks. Both you said it right there, Ron. Yeah, he's got he. If you can do that to Jaguar, you'll be in you know dominating him all day. But I don't see it happening as Wake Jaguar up, comes in. Oh. Like the leg kicks, straight to head kick. He's rocking oh, another him. Another nice little headlock to takeover. That was beautiful. The way he took him down there was just, you could just tell, he gave him a couple shots and just took him right down to the mat and kept him in his corner. That's the most important thing. He's cut the ring off, and he's Umzawa trying to tag in there as Onryo, as Jaguar trying to get away, but Onryo trying to keep him in his corner, which is smart tag team wrestling for sure. Oh, nice. Another uh, little leg, leg trip. Oh, Thank yeah. You. That was very nice as Umzawa's going to get the tag back in. And Jaguar maybe needs to make a tag to Fugo now. He's been out there for a while, but there's no quitting Jaguar. Look at that. He is going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Umzawa. He does not care. Ooh, Umzawa just like manhandling him. Look at that. I mean, just so much bigger. But oh, trying to yeah, she's going to pull right down into the guard, but uh, have no part of it. Oh, had no part of it. They just sort him down. Oh, good. He's a good thing he tagged Fugo in because these guys are rivals. Now it's going to get ugly, Dan. Look at that. 
this, 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 that, there's nothing but hate here coming right now. They're just like standing, staring at each other. Is that the best you got? Chop. I feel the, the hate in every slap, Dan. Every slap, I can feel the hate. Nope. Now we're going to switch to the chops. These guys, knife edges, overhands. Look at that. The, I think that, oh. Now these men, both masters of the headbutt. If both men are cracked open in this match like an egg, don't be surprised because almost every Master Fugo match ends up, oh, big Larry at Puma ends up with somebody bleeding. Fugo in some trouble now, Dan, as he's been flattened on the map by Umazawa. That lariat came out of nowhere, and that was just straight power. Oh, oh, flash. That looked like it hurts. <laughs> now, you, the gentlemen, if you're watching this, and ladies, you got to know that these guys are not pulling anything. This is the 10-year anniversary show, double main event. Everybody's a gamer in this match, and everybody's giving you the giving it everything. As you see these guys going back and forth with the volley on the slaps and the oh big forearm, Fugo trying to snatch up that arm and take Umazawa to the mat, but Umazawa just laying on him with his weight. As Fugo actually blind tags Jaguar, Jaguar comes in. Was what would you call that? Rear naked choke. Whoa. Very nasty, nasty rear naked choke. Keep him distracted. Well, as a partner climbs up from underneath. And these guys going crazy here. Fugo coming in, throwing the forearms. Look at that Umzawa and him. Like, they're just going right back at it. This is the good, the bad, and the ugly all over again, Dad. Look at this. I mean, everybody on this show wants to look good. Nobody wants to give a second. Nobody wants to give any quarter. Nobody wants to give anything. Look at that. Oh, snuck in from behind. Helped Umazawa get a cheap shot and then snuck a drop kick in right to his chest. And then another big standing kick to his head. Fugo and oh, look at that. Follows it up with four and a big Masato to knock a forearm to finish that. Onryo showing what he's learned in FMW for sure. So, oh, big nice leg lariat there right across the chest. Fugo in big trouble. But somehow Fugo able to rise to his feet. But Onryo snapmares him down and takes him right back with another whip kick to the back. Onryo looking really good. And then a Hunakurato! Wow! So see that feel off of a big bid like that. That is the first one I have ever seen in a World Underground ring in the Legends of the Underground. First time ever. As Fugo picks him up, as he looks like he's going to shoot a suplex in here. Is he going to get the suplex? Yes, he does. Nice. Excellent job by Fugo. That lower back. Oh, well, that ring is super stiff, Dan. It's three times stiffer than a regular wrestling ring, so I can tell you that sucks for sure. As soon as he hit, he was like, yeah, that sucks. And these guys are throwing big shots to each other. Everybody dropping bombs in here. I got to tell you, going at this, at this pace, I don't know how much longer these guys can go. They're beating the living hell out of each other. As Oh, there we go. Oh, oh big suplex. That was just nasty, Dan. I know you've taken some and given some of those before. It's better to give than receive any day. <laughs> Jaguar on top with the tag now coming in. Fugo catching some breath on top of Onrio with the blind tag made to Umzawa. Jaguar getting up. I think he's, no, he doesn't realize it, but he's, Umzawa just smothers him when he stands back up. And you, you know that was by design. They've yeah. been doing that all match. They don't want to give him any space to throw those, those strikes. Look at that. Nope, and they want to keep him in their corner. Look how these guys have done a masterful job of keeping the guys in their corner. And that is the that is the foundation of good tag team wrestling. Keep them inside your real estate. Control the match. Control the tempo. And, and you see now in the guard position, Jaguar just trying to hold on here because nobody wants to lose this match and have the disgrace. It's not just about the pay. It's about the pride, too. I think pride goes more than anything. Of course, sometimes they say pride goes before the fall, so we'll see. But these guys here, look at this. I mean, just Jaguar getting back on top on Umzawa. But I just, look, yeah. Or temp. But Umzawa is just going to be too strong. I don't see him getting that on Umzawa. It's just too big, too strong. As he bends his arm wisely, not giving Jaguar any quarter, but Jaguar using every look. Got his feet wrapped. He's trying everything to get that arm straight. But it just doesn't look like he's going to be able to get that down. As they rise to their feet, Jaguar and Umzawa looks like Jaguar's going to tag in Fugo. Smart move on Jaguar, but oh, they're going to start volleying again. Back here again, just, just, just. The hate. Before, hatred. Can't hatred. <laughs> Sheer hatred for the sake. Do you remember what Dusty Rhodes used to say? Violence for the sake of violence. And that's exactly what that is. Uh, oh, he also said funky like a monkey, and I like that too. 
But these guys have just brought it all match. Every time Umzawa and Fugo touch, you feel the electricity. Look at Umzawa. He's bleeding, Dad, from the forehead, like I told you. They're doing the super headbutts with everybody bleeding. Fugo's forehead bleeding. Umzawa's forehead bleeding. Look at this. Another belly to back suplex. Oh, and Fugo headbutted him to the back, too. That was the only way he got Umzawa over was to headbutt him in his back first and stun him as he tags in Jaguar. What? Jaguar's on the on, on rear naked choke position again. He's got the legs. And he's, got, and he's got it on him. He's got it on him. He ain't getting loose. He's tapping. Oh, my God. Look at that. Here comes Fugo. What's Fugo down with the abdominal stretch? And, and Onrio tapping. That's it. Double tap out. Match a double tap out. Your winners, Master Fugo and Jaguar Rogowski. All right, folks, this is Ron Von Hess with UFC legend Dan the Beast Severin. Here we are as Kana, a.k.a. Azuka of WWE, former WWE Women's Champion. This is one of her lost archive matches. She's going to take on Takiawa, who has been junior heavyweight champion for every league in Japan. You name it, Dan. IWGP, NOAA, you name it. He has been the junior heavyweight champion. It's man versus woman. How often, Ron, do, do, do you see a man versus woman uh, type of match like this, especially in, in a country like Japan? Oh, actually, more than you see here. And the difference between here is it's, it won't be fluff or for like sports entertainment. This is going to be a straight fight. As you saw when Takiawa came in the ring on the flight tile, on the fight tile, you could see all the different junior heavyweight championships that this man has held, including the 0 1. He is legit. And you can tell that. Now he's jumped up to the heavyweight division at this point. As you can see, he's put more weight on him, more muscle as he towers over Kana. And I will tell you right now, this match is going to be brutal. This is one of the matches that made her into Azuka and made her valuable to the world wrestling entertainment. Bottom line. You, you, you think, though, any time that a woman steps in, into a, a ring against a man, I mean, the, the physical attributes that, that being carry alone, I mean, you're just... She's uh, definitely uh, asking an awful lot of her ability. Well, she's got big heart, and that's what this match is all going to come down to. You've got a multiple-time champion who's held the belts everywhere against the young warrior child who's got heart. This is the match that plays in Japan, Dan, and I guarantee you the fans will love it because they shake hands. She even looks a little, she looks a little nervous, as well she should be. But this was going to be one hell of a fight. I'll tell you that right now. As the referee tells them to start, and they start sizing each other up, Kana wisely keeping a distance a bit as she shoots that leg in. But look at that. He's already – you can tell this guy's a junior heavyweight champion everywhere. Look at him. Yep. She's going well. She tried to do a little reversal action. No. Look at that. Very solid. Very solid. And the crowd definitely appreciates that. Looks at the crowd. You can tell they totally appreciate that. I can tell you right now. The crowd will pop for this match bigger than anything, Dan, because these two is what they've been waiting to see all night long. This is the main event of the 10th anniversary show. As he got, as they try to go back and forth with the holds there, Kana definitely uh, got to try to get some leverage on him and keep him down, right, Dan? No, no, you're, just, you're exactly right. I mean, I think right now that, uh, you know, I'll say that Kana is going in there with everything that she possibly has there, but... Uh, you know, you got uh, Takawa. Tak Takawa is that? Uh, you know, he just still has that that strength, that size. He was just toying with her right there. Did you see that? He just sat with her and he mocked her and he toyed with her. And I don't think she was very amused. No. And as he's got her down, as he's grabbing the arm, it looks like he's just like a cat playing with a mouse right now. As he, oh, look at, but look at that. She says that I am not a mouse. I'm more of a Tweety Bird, obviously. As she goes in, and you Looney Tune fans will know what I mean when I say that. She's going to get that putty tat. But look at her. He is definitely okay, the full mount position. Oh, yeah. Look for the arm bar. Oh, yeah. Look for the arm bar. And if he gets it, it's going to be over quick, Dan. But look at that. Look at her using her whole body for leverage right there to keep him off of her. That was so smart on her part. Look at her. And just going to the leg lock. Incredible. Kana, a.k.a. Azuka, 
showing her medal and showing why Vince McMahon gave her that contract and to begin with. As but look, he you can see why he is a multiple time champion. Every time she does something, he's countering it right on top. Every time, like I said, it's like a cat toying with a mouse. The mouse gets loose, and <laughs> and the cat just pounces right back on top of it. Basically, look at oh, it's got a well combination of a head scissor with an with an arm bar thrown in. It looks like. But look at Kana. She just keeps using, like, her speed to, you know, slip out on top of him. But look as he just stays right on top of her with the leverage. Flipped out for a moment there and then threw the smack down right on her. Just, yeah, and just sitting on her. Just sitting on her, Dad. Not even doing anything. Just sitting on her and looking at her. Like the cat looking at the mouse about ready to eat it. I hate to keep making that analogy, but, folks, if you're watching this... That's your scene. As Kana put up one hell of a fight, she's going back to that leg. But he's just too smart. Too smart and too experienced for this. As every time now she's going for the waist lock, as he did. But he just rolls her right over easily, Dan. Well, this. A lot of people, I mean, there, there's a true art there to, try to stay in, in a small package type of a position and being able to use your opponent's weight and momentum against us. And uh, definitely that is what is uh, Taki. Takiawa. Taki. And he's got her by the neck. Look how he's wrenching that neck and keeping all of his weight on top of her. I mean, that's going to take your air. Look, she finally slips out. And I'm sure she's happy to be sucking some air right now as she's on top of him. And she's working some leverage, it looks like, on his arm herself. But look, he just takes her right back down. Look at that. Now he's got a half crab on her. Now, if he gets that crab, it'll be over. But look at her wisely. He's actually trying to wrap right back around. Doing everything she can, but look at that, he's got that half crab, and he, she's in the middle of the ring. What's she going to do? Is she going to tap? This could be over quick, but if... but there's don't, don't realize the pressure that that was put on, on both her, her hip and on her knee joint itself. Wow, is this going to be an STF? Wow. Look at that. She is in a lot of trouble. He is just technically so sound and so superior, and, you know, with the leverage advantage he has. That Look at that oh, big shot to the back. That kind of just everything is just like a fly trying to bite a water buffalo. You know what I mean? Just not not feeling it as he gives her a big chop. To the chest. Kana with the go behind there by Takiawa who stays on top of her. But once again, she's going. One, the one smart thing she's doing is keeping on that leg. She's got to try to keep him. You know, maybe she can wear that knee out. Maybe she can slow that leg down just enough to maybe slip a strike in and knock him out. I mean, she's got to keep going back, just using her entire body. I mean, that, that's what she's trying to do right there. Just the way she's got her legs wrapped around, trying to go for that full full uh, body extension. And he shows it. Look at that as he, as he grabs his leg. Oh, in fact, it's a yeah. nice hit. She's starting to actually get to get to him a little bit, which is amazing. Really? Oh, yeah. Look at her. Oh, but he just uses that weight and that leverage advantage right on top of her. And look, and he sits on her again. Look at that. Just mocking her, slapping her in the belly, just mocking her. This man has no respect for Kana whatsoever. Look at that. Oh, that, that her throat. <laughs> but look at that. She is game. She is. She has come to fight, Dan. This little girl came to fight. And now you see why she ended up being a legend in pro wrestling, folks, because this girl comes to fight. And if you've ever seen Azuka in the WWE, you know she is definitely a fighter. And this shows you where she got that medal from, Dan. This is like one of her hometown promotions in Japan starting out. And she is kicking that ass. She is doing, I mean, I mean, come on. Oh, my goodness. Big side saltos. Yeah, boom. Just ruthless on Kana. But she, yeah, she was doing a great little reversal just then, but he just, again, that, that, that bad strength he had, he just picked her up and just slammed her. Just too much leverage, too much power. But, man, you got to give her credit. She just keeps coming for him. And look at that big chop. He plays with her, but she just keeps coming. And she doesn't show one bit of frustration, Dan, in the whole fight. Look at that big forearm shot from her with another kick. Another kick to the chest. And, ooh, and he just still got, snatches that foot. Just showing his size and his power and his leverage advantage. Trying to break her foot. Is she going to hit him with an throw, insiguri? I thought I'd wait for Wait, wait. This throw like a head kick there. She yeah, that's insiguri. <laughs> I thought for sure she was going to nail that insiguri. But... Once again, the leverage and the power of Takiawa. Look at that. Just swats her like a fly to the mat. Azuka, de excuse me, Kana, definitely in trouble here, now known as Azuka, as he picks her up, and he's just going to slam her to the mat now. Oh, yeah. Oh. 
is a tough to watch sometimes, but you know that this girl's got heart oh, and oh, she's a big success, so you know she's not going to give up. But wow, she is taking a beating, man. I mean, he's beating her like she owes him money. You know what I mean? So <laughs> they were running a Timex commercial out there. Just shows that she could take a look at it, but keeps on ticking. I'm telling you, she is definitely showing her metal. But at some point, this is going to have to end because he's just destroying her, and she's just hanging on by a thread. And Kana is so tough. I mean, you haven't seen one frustration or one quit in her. And the crowd is just kind of stunned right now. Look at this. They just love the heart of this little lady. I mean, this is how you win a crowd over in Japan. Oh! Oh! Big time short clothesline there. Or short, or was that a lariat or was that more of a, a clothesline? That was a clothesline lariat. That was just brutal. I mean, I feel that here. Is your neck hurting, Dan? Because my neck's hurting. That was ruthless. This little lady has come to fight, but sooner or later... Oh, oh nice! Look at that. What good counter there from Kana. Look at that. She's got like a straight arm bar. Potential arm bar here right, here right now as well. Look at that. Okay, I'm in trouble for the first time in this match. Look at this. Oh, oh. Right back into a different version of an arm bar now. Okay, photographer, we want to see too. Get down. All right, look at her. She's got him. All right, look at this. I mean, you haven't seen Takiyawa in this kind of trouble in the whole match, Dan. He's in trouble. Look as he's trying to get over to the chain, but she's wisely turning her body to keep him away, but he got to the chain. The other, other way. Got to break that hold. Kana back up to her feet, though, because she's feeling it. That's right, little lady. Pour that pressure on. She's pouring the pressure on. Takiyawa was showing some pain. Look at this. He ain't laughing now, Dan. Oh, no, no. I think pay, Payback's a bitch, and she's delivering the goods. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Kana, tired of getting treated like a rag doll. Ooh, shot that another one of those big lariats, and she whacks him in the back of the neck. All right. <laughs> Do you pull up a belly to back German suplex right now? Oh, oh, yeah. He's, he's holding on, but you got to remember, he's still just got so much size and so much leverage on her. But look at this lady. She, you just got to love her and respect her. I mean, look at the punishment she is taking. Oh. <gasps> Death Valley Driver. Oh! Oh! oh. Invented by Louis Spicoli. I don't know if she's going to get up from that, Dan. I honestly think that's that's going to be it. It looks like they're calling it. Wow. Kana, folks. Losing to Takiawa in what was, I mean, just an incredible battle. you got to give it to heart. The crowd just stunned as they were behind this little lady. And they definitely thought... She, you know, was going to pull it out. Kana definitely shaking it off. God, she was tough, Dan. And the crowd really appreciating it. As look at Takiawa just standing over her, just stalking her. Your winner, Takiawa. But brutal match. It's a brutal match to super watch. Brutal. I mean, she, uh, Kana, you got to give her some type of a, uh, just the courage award there for, for what she took on and the punishment that she took throughout this entire match all the way up to the very end not surprising that she won the wwe women's championship as takiawa comes over oh great sign of Show respect the there he he gave her a brutal beating but look as he helps her up look at this and the crowd loving it dan 